Good morning and welcome back to our Bible reading. I'm Ray Reynolds from the Somerdale Church of Christ. We're reading today in the book of Joshua beginning at chapter 7. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bible and grab a notepad or a piece of paper that you can take notes on. And we will dig into the Word of God together beginning Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Don't let all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. And about three thousand men went up there from the people, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about thirty-six men, for they chased them before the gate as far as Shabarim, and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted, and they became like water. And Joshua tore his clothes and fell down to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Oh, that we've been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. Oh, Lord, what shall we say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off your name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel sinned and they have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have been uh, both stolen and deceived. And they also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore, uh, anymore unless you destroy the accursed things among you. Get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there's an accursed thing in your midst. O oh, Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families. And the family which the Lord takes shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take uh, shall come by man. Then it shall be that he who has taken the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he than all he has, because he's transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he's done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and by the tribe of Judah was taken. He broke the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerahites, and brought them, brought the family uh, of the Zerahites by man, man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And then he brought the household man by man, and Achan, the son of Camry, the son of Zabni, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord your God of Israel, and make confession to him. Tell him now, tell me now what you have done, and do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I've done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent. And there it was, hidden in the tent with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had and brought it to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Then they raised over him a great heap of stones still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of that place uh, has been called the Valley of Acre to this day. Now the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. And you shall do to Ai as the king and its king, as you did in Jericho and its king. 
only its spoil and its cattle you shall take as booty for yourselves. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua rose and all the people of war uh, to go up to Ai, and Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city. Behind the city, do not go very far from the city, but all of you be ready. Then I and all the people who are with me will approach the city, and it will come about when they come out against us at first that we shall flee before them. For they will come out after us till we have driven them from the city. For they will say, They are fleeing before us at the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Then you shall rise from the ambush and seize the city, for the Lord your God will deliver you into their into your hand. And it will be, when you have taken the city, that you shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord you shall do. See, I have commanded you. Joshua therefore sent them out. And they went to lie in ambush and stayed behind Bethel and Ai on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged at the night among the people. Then Joshua rose up early in the morning, mustered the people, and went up, and he and the elders of Israel before the people to Ai. All the people of war who were with him went up and drew near, and they came before the city and camped out on the north side of Ai. Now a valley lay between them and Ai, so he took about 5,000 men and set them in the ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, all the army was on the north side of the city and its rear guard on the west side of the city. Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. Now it happened when the king of Ai saw it, the men of the city hurried and rose early and went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people, and appointed a place between the, uh, before the plain. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all the Israel made us... Uh, made as if they were beaten before them and fled away from the wilderness. So all the people who were in Ai were called together to pursue them. And they pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who did not go out after Israel. So they left the city open and pursued Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it to your hand. Joshua stretched out the spear, and it was in his hand toward the city. So there, those in ambush rose quickly out of their place. They ran as soon as they as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered the city and took it, and hurried to set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended into heaven. So they had no power to flee this way or that way, and the people who had fled into the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. Now, when Joshua and all Israel saw the ambush had taken the city and the smoke of the city ascended, they turned back and struck down the men of Ai. Then the others came out against the, the city against them. So they were caught in the middle of Israel, some on this side, some on that side, and they struck them down so that they let none of them remain or escape. But the king of Ai, they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness where they pursued him, and when them, and when they had fallen at the edge of the sword until they were all consumed, that all the Israelites returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. So it was that all who fell that day, both men and women, were twelve thousand, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back his hand, with which he stretched out the spear until he utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the livestock and the spoil of the city Israel took as booty for themselves, according to the word of the Lord, which he had commanded Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a heap forever, a desolation to this day. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until evening. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his corpse down from the tree, cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city, and raise over it a heap of stones that remains to this day. Now Joshua built an altar to the Lord God of Israel at Mount Ebal, as M Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the children of Israel, as it was written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man has wielded an iron tool. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And there in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. Then all Israel, with their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark, before the priests, the Levites, who bore the Ark of the Covenant to the, of the Lord, the stranger as well as he who was born among them, 
half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before, that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, which Joshua did not read before the assembly of Israel, with the women, the little ones, and the strangers who were living among them. And it came to pass when all the kings who were on the side of the Jordan and the hills and the lowland and the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite heard about it, they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua, what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they worked craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors. They took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskins torn and mended, old patched sandals on their feet, old garments on themselves, and all their bread and their provisions were dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua to the camp of Gilgal and said to him, to the men of Israel, We've come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us. When the men of uh, Israel said to the then the men of Israel said to the Hivites, perhaps will you dwell among us? So how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, we're your servants. And Joshua said to them, who are you and where do you come from? So they said to him, from a very far country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God, for we have heard of his fame and and all that he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who are beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan, who is at Asheroth. Therefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions with you for the journey, and to go out, meet them, and say to them, We are your servants, now therefore make a covenant with us. The bread of ours we took hot, hot for our provision from our houses in the day we departed to see you, but now look, it's dry and moldy. And these wineskins which were filled were new, and see, they're torn. And our garments and our sandals had become old because of the very long journey. Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask the counsel of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them, made a covenant with them to let them live, and the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And it happened at the end of three days after they had made the covenant with them that they heard that they were neighbors who dwelt near them. Then the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shephira, Beeroth, and Karajath Jerem. But the children of Israel did not attack them because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation complained against the rulers. Then the rulers said to the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This is uh, This we will to do to them. We will let them live, lest wrath be on us because of the oath which we swore to them. And the rulers said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers in the congregation, as rulers had promised them. And Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying we are from uh, very far from you, when you dwelt near us? Now therefore you are cursed, and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters, and wa water carriers to the house of my God. So they answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. Therefore, we were very much afraid for our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now, here we are in your hands. Do with us as, good, as it seems good and right to do to us. So he did to them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, so they did not kill them. And that day... Uh, Joshua made them woodcutters and water carriers for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord in the place which he ch would choose even to this day. Really appreciate you tuning in today to our readings. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Until then, have a blessed day.